Ladies and gentlemen, Rex Bear Leak Project, a 5.8 magnitude earthquake just hit outside of Yellowstone, 48 kilometers from the Helena Valley, west central Montana, United States. Now you can see right here, I got two emails this morning from people that live out there. One of them said, actually one person lives out there, I don't know where the other person lives, I think Arizona. Um, but the one person that lives out there said, Rex, the earthquake was the worst I ever felt. I was dizzy. What's going on? The clouds are bizarre out here. They're rolling in black. There's this weird red and yellow coloring out in the sun, um, in the horizon, I should say. Not in the sun, but out in the horizon. What is going on? Well, let's hope that this 5.8 earthquake is actually a good thing out there. Let's hope that all these earthquakes, because I did some um, checking. I went and pulled this up right here. The past 30 days, there's been 1,174 earthquakes in the region. Now, normally this time of year, the earthquake does, um, earthquake, activity does spike, it does increase, but not this much. The yearly average of earthquakes for an entire year, including this month, ladies and gentlemen, because I've had several people say, this is normal, Rex, totally normal. The yearly average for earthquakes in Yellowstone is 2,000. They say 1 to 3,000 is the yearly average. So let's average that out. 2,000 is the yearly average. We've hit over 1,100 quakes in 30 days. Take 1174 times that by 12, you've got over 14,000 earthquakes. That's a 700% increase if you use the 2,000 earthquakes a year scenario. Now, with that said, maybe all of these mini quakes, it's allowing it to vent, to cool off so it doesn't go boom. Now, when you do have people saying that they've lived out there their whole lives and a 5.8 quake is the, is the most intense they've ever felt, well, that de definitely makes me more, it would make me more aware and more prepared for a situation in that area to get the heck out of Dodge if I needed to. If I start seeing animals leave Yellowstone, that's when I know it's time to go. Because animals seem to be in that psychic no, into that, whatever that vibrational frequency is that they can tap into. Keep an eye on the animals. Now, Lincoln, Montana, power was actually lost out there because the earthquake was so intense. And elevation out there, it's about 4,500 feet, about 1,100 people. And it's not a very big area. And that size of an earthquake is quite the anomaly. Now, I pulled up the map right here just so you can see for yourself that you're only, and that's if you're taking all these turns and stuff like that, you're less than 250 miles if you were to take a straight path there, it's less than 250 miles away. Uh, we'll go back over here and look at all the activity in the area. 1,174 earthquakes in the past 30 days. Let's take a look at this right here. So you can see you've got the interactive map, the regional information. If you go to usgs.gov, the earthquake.usgs.gov, the shake map. This is a pretty neat website right here. So the July 6th 5.8 quake, according to this website, occurred as the result of shallow strike slip faulting along either a right lateral near vertical fault trending east-southeast or on a left lateral vertical fault striking north-northwest, northeast, I'm sorry. Nanu, nanu. The location and focal mechanism solution of this earthquake are consistent with right lateral faulting in association with faults of the Lewis and Clark line, a prominent zone of strike slip, dip slip, and oblique slip faulting trending east, southeast from northern Idaho to east of Helena, Montana, southeast of this earthquake. It's a broad zone of faulting about 400 kilometers in length, up to 80 kilometers wide. <laughs> Wow. Quite incredible. So there you have it, a 5.8 quake in Yellowstone. You guys should pick up one of these quick bivvies. Click the link in my video description box. Everybody should seriously have one of these quick bivvies. They fit in the palm of your hand. They weigh a few ounces. You can put them just about anywhere. Glove box, under your car seat. You can put them in your bug out bag. In, if you're a gal and you've got a small purse, you could put one of these in your purse. And if you ever get in a situation where you need to stay warm and you didn't come prepared, this three-ounce 
bag, bivy sack, could help save your life. And they're cheap. So click the link. Be excellent to each other. Be the change you want to see. Leakproject.com.